Vicred's interpretation and use of proof of stake is unique to the project and is referred to as ticket voting. Rather than using proof of stake as an independent security mechanism, it's used as a verification and governance mechanism, which is arguably its original intended purpose. A single ticket can be used in three areas in the Decred project. Predominantly, a ticket is used to vote on the validity of a block. Secondly, a ticket is used to vote on a rule change or an upgrade for the project, commonly referred to as a consensus change. And lastly, a ticket is used to vote on proposals for Decred treasury spending. Tickets can only be bought using the DCR coin, and the price is determined using an algorithm that aims for an optimal ticket pool size of approximately 41,000 tickets. Tickets in the Decred system are finite, just like the coin supply. This deterministic approach makes sure that participants have skin in the game and burden the full implications of their actions. As a feature to secure the system, tickets are randomly selected to vote over the course of a cycle, which can be as long as 142 days. Until a ticket is called to vote, it's locked up in the system and can't be withdrawn until the process is completed. Having value locked up encourages participants to act responsibly and act in the perceived best interests of the project. The ticket price can be a good indicator for general confidence in the project and the overall growth as the people purchasing tickets are generally the long-term holders of the coin. It can also be a really good trend line to follow. For instance, if the ticket price goes up, it means that more participants are actively trying to buy tickets. And as the price goes down, participants are trying to exit their ticket positions with more frequency than those that are trying to buy. Because the ticket pool size of 41,000 will algorithmically continue to be achieved, there is less manipulation here than you would typically see in the DCR exchange price. The current average price of a ticket is approximately 150 DCR, and the maximum price a ticket can ever be is approximately 512 DCR. So, how does block voting work? For each block, five tickets get called to vote, and if three or more of the tickets vote yes to validate the block, the block is approved and then gets added to the blockchain. If less than three of the five tickets vote yes, the block is rejected and a new block needs to be mined in its place. For a block to be approved, it must meet the explicit consensus rules for the current version of the protocol. For instance, if a block tries to use the old rules or tries to mine an empty block, it will get rejected by the voting tickets. Block voting is an automatic process which requires no manual input from the ticket holder, but for a ticket to vote, it must be connected constantly to the chain via an active full node. If the ticket is not connected when it gets called to vote, its vote will be missed and receive none of the expected reward. To mitigate against missed tickets, a ticket holder can use a voting service provider or VSP, which aims to always be connected to the blockchain. There is, however, a small charge applied to this. This is generally between 1% and 5% of the reward. So, how does consensus voting work? Consensus votes are infrequent and typically happen less than four times a year. The vote is manual and has to be activated by the ticket holder with either a yes or a no vote. If a ticket is not activated, it will abstain from the voting process. A consensus vote is only required when there is a planned upgrade to the protocol, for instance, going from version 7 to version 8. As these can be contentious upgrades, it's important that every protocol change goes up for vote, where the ticket voting stakeholders have the final say. In order for a vote to pass, a minimum of 10% of the votes must be active, and at least 75% of these votes must be yes. And finally, how does proposal voting work? Decred has a system called Politea where community members can put up proposals for Decred treasury spending. Successful proposals will focus on Decred-centric items like developing software to be used in the Decred ecosystem or helping to market to promote awareness for the project. As a side note, if you're interested in putting up a proposal, there are two steps that you should consider first. These steps are not 100% necessary, but your proposal is less likely to be successful if you don't take them. So step one, introduce yourself to the Decred media channels. Talk to members of the community about getting involved with the project and how you might be able to contribute.
Step two, contribute and demonstrate your skill base with reference to Decred. This is normally free work, but it's a good way of demonstrating your understanding of the project and your skill levels. From what I've seen over the last two years in the Decred world, stakeholders are more likely to approve a proposal if they understand the value you add to the project and know that you are a valuable member of the community. They're also more likely to approve a proposal if the price is reasonable and demonstrates good value for the Decred Treasury spending. Once a proposal has been written, submitted and validated, it's then time to discuss. It's at this stage the Decred community will grill you about what you're aiming to produce. Once this stage is completed, it's then time to vote. In terms of the voting process, at least 20% of the ticket holders must vote, and out of those votes, at least 60% must be yes votes. This was a whirlwind tour of how Decred's proof of stake voting works. This is a well thought out and implemented system and demonstrates just how far ahead of the cryptocurrency space Decred really is.